Hello everyone and welcome to this new lecture. In this lecture, we're going to cover some of performance or key performance indicators or KPIs for classification models. All right, again, if, you, if some of you guys are familiar with these concepts, please go ahead and skip this lecture. The overall idea here is to lay the foundations for you guys. So in the next lecture, we're gonna start with totally brand new concepts such as recurrent neural networks, such as uh, LSTM, and such as Deep Dream and GANs or Generative Adversarial Networks. All right. So first, how can we assess the performance of classification techniques? We assess the performance simply using what we call it confusion matrix. So what we do here is that we create this matrix in which we put all the predictions, which is what the model is predicting here on the rows, and we put all the true classes, which is our ground truth, we put them here on the columns. So for example, here the model might say positive or negative, which means two classes, either one or zero, and here my true classes, either one or zero. So if my model predictions matches my true class, these what we call it true positives. If my model predictions matches my true class, okay, of my model predicted, let's say negative, for example, and my true class was actually negative, that's what we call it true negatives. And then that's, we, here we mark them as green because that's when everything is good, you know, when everyone is happy. I hope my model will be able to get, you know, all the true positives and the true negatives. However, that's not what happened in reality. What happened in reality is sometimes the model messes up, which means the model might predict, for example, positive, okay? So, for example, the model might say that there is the patient has, let's say, cancer, for example. So that's positive. However, in reality, the true class was actually negative. In reality, my patient was actually cancer free. OK, and that's what we call it false positives. And uh, we call this type of error type two error. OK, which is. And we call this type of error, we call it type one error. OK, and we call it type one error because, yes, I understand it's still an error. Yes, it's still a problem, but the patient is still is still fine. Yes, we scared, you know, scared him off by telling him that you have cancer. But in reality, he was actually cancer free. He was actually OK. He was actually fine. So that's what we call it type one error. However, this is the problem. OK, that's the issue. And that's why we mark this in red. That's when. Our prediction says we are negative, which means the model says I do not, the patient does not have cancer. That means negative. However, in reality, the patient did have cancer. And that's a big issue. And that's what we call a type two error. And that's what we want to avoid at all costs. Okay. Because that means, you know, if you don't treat him, him or her, then, you know, the, 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 um, the disease might grow and then, you know, like that would be too late at some point. So you basically messed up big time here. And that's why we call it type two error. All right. So let's take a look at, again, some of the definitions. As I mentioned, we have true positives, which is cases when the classify, classifier predicted true, which means that the patient had the cancer or had a disease and the correct class was actually true, which means the patient in reality has a disease. So that's a true positive. True negatives are when the cases when the model predicted false, which means he doesn't have a disease. And in reality, the patient was actually disease free. He doesn't have it. He doesn't have a disease as well. These are OK. Now to the problems, we have false positives, which is what we call a type one error. That's when the classifier predicted true, but the correct class was actually false. And the false negatives are type two error. That's when the classifier predicted false, when we said that the patient does not have a disease, but they actually do have a disease in reality. And that's why we call this type two error. All right. So let's take a look at the key performance indicators or KPIs. What we do here is that we assess the performance of a classification strategy using these kind of, you know, four main KPIs. First one is the classification accuracy. We simply sum up the true positives plus true negatives. We divide by the overall number of samples, which is true positives plus true negatives plus false positives plus false negatives. The other one is the misclassification rate or the error rate, which is simply we sum up our how many times we messed up, which is false positives plus false negatives. 
and we divide by the total positives, true positives, plus true negatives, plus false positive, plus false negative. Again, the overall number of samples. And then these are the two important kind of, you know, definitions when we assess the performance of a classification technique. And this is what we call it precision and recall. Precision is simply when the model predicted true, how often was it right? Okay, so we take the true positives and we divide by the overall total true predictions. We simply divide true positives divided by true positives plus false positives. Simply put here, when we take a look at this, we divide basically the true positives divided by true positives plus false positives. Okay, and that's what we call it precision. Okay, which is simply when the model said that the patient has a disease, which means I'm here on this row, how many times I was right and how many times I messed up. Basically, that's all what it is. And that's the first definition. The second definition is what we call as recall, which is simply we're going to divide the true positives divided by true positives plus false negatives, which is again, to recall means is that when the class was actually true, how often did the classifier get it right? Which means here, when the actual true, when in reality, when the class was actually positive here in this column, how many times I got it right? Which is mean how many times I have been able to detect these positive cases, okay? If you guys are confused, I know it's, it might sound a little bit confusing, so let's take a look at a practical example. Let's assume that I have 100 patients, okay? And out of these patients, actually, I think I have here these numbers. So let's assume that again, I have 100 patients, okay? And let's assume that I have, out of these 100 patients, I have 91 of them are cancer-free, so they are healthy patients, and I have nine patients who have cancer, okay? And let's assume that I trained my classifier and I came up with these values. So now I have the classifier has been able to classify true positives equals to one. The classifier got true negatives equal 90. So he got 90 samples as true negatives. And then the classifier got a false positive equals to one. And the classifier got false negatives equals to eight. Okay. So if I give you this confusion matrix, could you please assess the performance of this, you know, like artificial neural network or the classifier model? Um, objectively. So first we say, you know what, I will go and calculate the classification accuracy. I'm going to sum up my true positives plus true negatives, which is simply 90 plus one, which is 91. And I'm going to divide by the overall number of samples, which is simply a hundred. So I will come up with 91%. Okay. So if you take a look at it, you will say, you know what, this network is actually going, doing amazing. It got 91% accuracy. Everything looks great. However, this network, in reality, it's actually garbage. It's actually useless. Let's see why is it useless. So if we try to calculate the precision, we'll find that if we sum up true positives divided by the total true predictions, I will come up with one divided by true positives plus false positives, which is half, which is two. So I'm going to get one divided by two. So I will get 50%, which means the model is actually 50% kind of precise when it comes to making predictions. Again, kind of useless. And if we take a look at the recall, which is again, out of these nine cancer patients, how many of them I have been able to detect? That's the exact answer. So as you guys can see here, basically the network has been able to only detect one cancer patient. So it's one divided by one plus eight. So it's one divided by nine. That's only 11%, which is horrible. Okay. And basically when we have an unbalanced data set, like in this case, when we have, let's say hundred patients, 91 of them are healthy and 9% or nine of them have cancer. That means it's an unbalanced data set. So now we need to actually take a look at the precision and recall to fully understand what's the performance of my classifier in this case. And again, you will find that this network again is totally useless because out of these nine cancer patients, I've only got one cancer patient, which is again, pretty terrible. The false negatives are eight. That's a huge number. Okay. All right. Okay. And that's all what I have for this lecture. And that will conclude kind of our uh, kind of, you know, like review um, section. 
and please enjoy TensorFlow 2.0 Practical Advanced, and I will see you guys in the next lecture.